Link. Link. Be on your guard. Ganon's power grows. It rises to its peak under the hour of the blood moon. Knowing Amazon, that was probably a legitimate Cheetos brand integration. Uh, yeah, welcome to episode seven, everyone. Uh, I've watched the whole thing and now I'm actually sick. Like, it, 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 it made me physically ill. It was a show what done it. Like and subscribe and I'll give you a tissue. Uh, and if you leave a comment as well, I'll send you a used one. <laughs> Is this a fever dream or have I just had too much NyQuil? Now I wouldn't actually put it past Amazon to have gone practical with this shot and legitimately just set an actual horse on fire. And why is why is Galadriel like bouncing out of the way like she's some sort of Teletubby? Teletubbies! Hmm, I can already tell there's gonna be a load of dramatic pausing in this episode, isn't there? Mother! Over here! You're not his mother. It looks like this episode is gonna be even worse than the last. And like I mentioned in the last episode, as soon as you notice that how just how much of the episode is taken up with people just staring into the distance for no good reason and pausing between each and every single word in a sentence mm. as soon as you notice it, it like it's unreal how much they do it i've never seen anything like it and just watch how weird this character interaction is like i'm not sure if it's the actors or the material or both are you hurt Why does she touch his face like she's gonna like make out with him or something? It's so weird. Like, and if she's that bothered about whether he's injured or not, why didn't she say something sooner? Why didn't she shout out? Like, look how long it takes her to ask him if he's okay. Are you hurt? Uh, it's just so socially weird in such a way that it gives me like, it gives me that heebie-jeebies. It gives me the shivers, man. Blah. I don't know, man. I, I, you know, like I say, I, I'm trying to decide whether it's it's the actors the script or the direction. And I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to think it's a mixture of all three. We haven't even finished the cheese dust scene yet. And if you think I'm being unreasonable, it then immediately cuts to a shot of a guy crawling across the ground, like <sighs> literally on fire. Galadriel couldn't give a Claude Van Damme about this guy. Oh, but as long as the Mancunian kid with the ball cuts all right, who cares? include that you can even hear him like <laughs> just, no one cares about him try being a main character next time loser now tolkien's narrative when it comes to morality is it's you know it's usually quite binary it's, it's good versus evil uh you know th there's not a lot of room for moral ambiguity but uh, you know and I'm, I'm glad they've kept that uh that theme within this show but uh they've somehow managed to completely flip it like in the sense that every person who is supposed to be good you actually just find being an insufferable asshole constantly. And the people who are supposed to be bad, you actually end up sympathizing with. Like, I know it's a meme at this point, but I'm actually rooting for Sauron. And then cut to a sealed door, whose best friend is stuck under a roof and he just doesn't have the strength to get him out. You know what you need, Sunshine? You need the help of a docile character that's not done anything so far in the show. Valhandi. She can't even carry the plot. God knows how she managed to lift that roof. Oh my God, a character whose name I've forgotten who I don't care about just died. Oh, oh my God. Oh, it's like Ned Stark all over again. Soldier, he's gone. Oh, get over it. Oh, what was that, your best friend or something? Oh no, my best friend, boo hoo. Oh, stop being such a wuss. Have you ever tried being a strong, independent woman before? Okay, scratch that, because she might have the strength to lift a roof, but when she needs a, just like a wooden panel moving, she has to get two soldiers to do that for her. Yeah. This way. Take hold of my hand. Right. Why are they just sitting in a burning building? I mean, if you stay there, you're 100% going to die. So you might as well just try and break out of somewhere, but we know the only reason these extras are here are to make the other main characters look bold and brave. Look, Amazon just need to swallow their pride for season two. Get rid of Lindsay Webber. Fire the director, fire the showrunners, fire anyone who touched the script. Get on your knees and beg Tom Shippey and John Howe to come back. Get Alan Lee on board, if you can do. Actually reply to Peter Jackson. Like, just take a look at the Sonic movie, for example. 
Look what they did. They released the trailer, they messed something up completely, they were relentlessly mocked for God knows how long, and rather than turn around and then attack the fans and blame them for all the negative attention, they took a step back, they said, do you know what? You're right. We're going to go away and fix it. They did, and everyone lived happily ever after. There, you, there is still time to save the show. Just don't double down, please. Or not. Never mind. So then, in a suspenseful shot, they show a burning building collapsing in on the brave sealed door. <laughs> Except the fact it's not that suspenseful because we know he's alive at the War of the Last Alliances, so he doesn't die here. Pull this with your original characters, sure, because we didn't even know they existed in the first place. But is sealed door? Really? Even the most casual fans will know this stuff. So fine. Half-foots are back and they're still singing. Brilliant. Actually, I want to bring something up because uh, when I, my review for episode five, remember the, the walking song? Call to me, call to me, lands far away. For I must now wander this wandering day. The reason I want to bring that up is because in the comments there was actually a couple of people trying to defend that song. Now Music and song is an integral part of Tolkien's work. But, stay calm, Johnny. At no point did Tolkien ever write Disney pop style melodies. Melody, the structure of notes. Never. And I even had one person try to tell me Tolkien wrote that song. Remain calm. No, he didn't. Tolkien did not write that song. And nor does it appear in any of his works, books, letters, nothing. Don't say these things <laughs> because I'm losing my brain cells. Genuinely, I couldn't believe that there were people actually saying, oh, it's okay because talking like song. Different thing, completely different thing. Just because there's, there's music in Tolkien's work does not mean you can just slap any song you want in and that's fine because Tolkien referred to music. No, no. Just smell that, quit smoke. The others must have started baking. Nope. <laughs> Get wrecked, you dirty little psychopaths. So, the orchard where a bunch of fruit grows that the Harfoots were hoping to uh, harvest some fruit from has been hit with like loads of debris and fire from Mount Doom. But uh, luckily, not Gandalf decides, you know, he's going to try and help the situation. And, you know, he begins to use his magic to unburn a tree. <laughs> Now these Harfoots really are despicable people. So Gandalf, not Gandalf, is trying to help them. And whilst he's doing this, one of the Harfoot kids like decides to run right up to the tree whilst he's doing this. Like a branch snaps off, almost like hits the kid. And then everyone blames not Gandalf for this. Not the kid for being thick as shit. No, they blame Gandalf and they make him feel bad about it. He's clearly traumatized about this. <laughs> These people are just vile. They're horrible. I have never seen a show miscommunicate their protagonists or good guys so badly. I despise them. I absolutely despise them. Anyway, we're back with Elrond and it would appear that his diplomacy is as good as ever. Why should we trust any elf? You should not, but you can trust me. Hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I guess that makes sense. For I am no common elf. Don't do it. He's about to Galadriel us. But Elrond half-elven. Oh, here we go. And I see in elves that which they cannot see in themselves. Oh, yeah, you can't trust elves for shit, but it's okay because I'm only half-elf. Biology. <laughs> that is why I stand before you now. All right, mate, I know they're shorter, but you don't have to rub it in like that. So Elrond is trying to convince the older Durin to let the elves keep all of the mithril that the dwarves would end up mining. Uh, now, if that sounds selfish, it's because it's because it is. Yeah, you know that top secret ore that you guys have, have started mining? Like, yeah, how about like, you know, you know, you do all, you do all the hard work and then we'll keep all of the mithril so we can live longer than you. That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. But, uh, you know, what's in it for the dwarves? In exchange, the elves are prepared to furnish this city with game, 
grain and timber from the elder forests of Eriador. Dead animals, flour, and wood. Huh. Yeah, I can't, uh, I can't see him turning down that offer. I will not risk dwarven lives to help the elves cheat death. Well, isn't that surprising? Well, lucky for Elrond, uh, younger Durin, has got his back and he won't take no for an answer. What if he's right? Oh, well, never mind then. I shouldn't have said he had lice in his beard. Huh. I detest it when you heap slag on my mother. Hey, well, in your mother's case, she actually does have lice in it. I'm joking. I'm joking. That was a dwarven your mum joke. That's cool. That's... That's really cool. Why'd they do this? To make this their home. Their shadow land. Their shadow land? <laughs> this cost... This, this cost 50 million an episode. <laughs> you know, I've seen a lot of people in the comments memeing about how this show is like, you know, it's a big cover for just a load of money laundering that Amazon's doing. But you know what? I'm actually starting to come round to that idea. I think it might actually have some legitimacy to it because... Where is this, where is this money being spent? Legitimately, where is the, where's the money, Jeff? I don't see it. What are you so bothered about? It isn't your fault. Yes, yes it is. Yes it is. Ah, well, <laughs> at least she admits it. Well, now we're back with the Lendil and he wants to know what's happened to his sealed door. Captain, Captain, where is he? See, now they've got the awkward job of telling him that they left his son for dead. Because, okay, so the, the burning building collapsed on him. But like I've, like, you know, like we've explained, we know he's alive at the, the War of the Last Alliances. So we know this doesn't kill him. So, you know, they didn't go looking for him. They didn't pull him out and find like his charred dead body. No, like I say, we know he's alive. So they will have had to have just left him. They didn't try to say, they went in to save the extras when they were inside the burning building. But, you know, now it's a sealed door. They, they clearly just left him. They didn't even bother to try and help him. They're just like, nah. He's dead. They're dead, aren't they? What cannot be known hollows the mind. Fill it not with guesswork. By the way, I might have missed something here, but other than because of the plot, can anyone give me like a legitimate reason as to why these two have been separated from everyone else who have all managed to stay together? And now, how many have you killed? Many. Good. I would not use such words. No, you'd probably be much more graphic about it, Miss Scourge of the Orcs. Glad to see you taking the moral high ground now for God knows what reason. Do you think we just forgot your genocidal rant in the last episode? Why not? It darkens the heart to call dark deeds good. Boy, what the hell? No way! She's doing it again. She's doing that thing where she, she lectures another character whilst literally talking about herself. You have zero brain cells remaining. And we're back with the half -Fots once again. And you know, even though their motto is no one walks alone, they've once again decided to leave someone to walk by themselves. And this time it's not Gandalf, but it's all good because they got him an apple. Mm-hmm. I got you an apple. Will you piss off now, please? And by the way, what is with this show and apples? Have you ever lost someone close to them? My brother, Finrod, and my husband. Don't you dare say Celeborn. Husband. Celeborn. Cel Celeborn is dead. The, the Celeborn that was famously alive in the Third Age, Celeborn. And he was killed by orcs, you say? That's why he's not been around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I swear, if this show tries to introduce some sort of time traveling, I'm not gonna be a happy bunny. And they've copied yet another scene from the Peter Jackson trilogy. You know, the, the scene in the Fellowship where they're all hiding uh, in the roots of the tree from the Nazgul. And we're back with Brokeback Mineshaft. I was... winded. Okay. Then we get a, a very creative shot, definitely a brave 
uh, artistic decision, we get a shot from inside Elrond's arsehole. Nice. And we're back with the Harfoots, who are having a bit of a scuffle with Slim Shady, and Slim Shady, as always, is spitting fire. Literally. I'm a hair in her foot, and I bring the lot of you. On board. I should have left her in the sea where I found her. Even Elendil is seeing sense. Oh man, this episode is brilliant. He hates Galadriel. All the Harfoot's homes have been burnt to a little crisp. The Queen Regent is blind now. Oh my god, imagine she leans in now and says, You have not seen what I have seen. <laughs> Do not spend your pity on me, Elf. Okay, calm down, mate. You can chill with the whole, you know, enlightened monk persona. Like the whole, you know, touching the whole face. You've been blind for half an episode. You know, you feel, you can read people's faces now by touching them? I don't think so. We're Harfoots. Ah, oh dear, I think I know what's coming. Look, we don't slay dragons, but there's one thing we can do, I warn, better than any creature in all Middle Earth. We stay true to each other. Well, that's a lie. You consistently leave people behind. With our hearts even bigger in our feet. There it is. There it is. It wasn't a fever dream. It's actually in the show. Oh, breaking the fourth wall like that. Oh, this is, this is special television. And we just keep walking. I hate these people. I'm sorry, why? Why is she looking out to sea as though she can see? That's all my fault. No, it isn't. Why is that like that? Whew! Man, this dialogue is something else, isn't it? That is the name of a place that no longer exists. Or should we call it instead, Lord Father? No way. Guys, the Southlands was Mordor this whole time. I don't think anyone saw that coming. No one predicted that. That's plot twist. And why didn't they just get Adar to say Mordor? Like, is it because he doesn't decide that's what it's called? So they got the overlay to do it instead. Cool. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. It helps these videos. Drop a comment down below. That also helps with the uh, interaction and all that. What did I think of this episode? Well, I thought it was um da -da 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 -da. shit. And a big shout out to Steve the Goat, Pozzabon, Saeed, Brennus, Dr. Melski, MG Virgil, and every single one of the patrons and the channel members. You guys really, really do help me behind the scenes. Thank you so much. Genuinely, thank you. Like I, I don't quite deserve the kindness that you show me. Uh, but you know, I need the help. So, so thank you genuinely. And there we go. Episode seven. What did you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Hopefully you can stick around for the next episode, which should be coming soon. But until then, take care of yourselves guys. And I'll see you real soon.